Well, hi, Jamie. Hello, Heidi, and everyone out there. How are you? Uh, I, I, it, a beautiful, it, it, sunny, oh, it's a beautiful, cold sunny day. day. A Very beautiful, cold sunny, cold day. Central Iowa. And I think it's going to get colder. If you do not know where Hen and Chick Studio is, we are in Central Iowa, and uh, we love hearing where you are watching from. Now we can't see any comments today because we're the way we're filming. So be sure to um, just note that we'll read all of your comments later or check on them in a minute. But we love to know where you're watching from <laughs> because it's fascinating to us to see um, who is watching and where they're watching mm -hmm. from and all of that. Yes. Um, but yes, we're located in central Iowa. We're, we're actually, I think, kind of warm today for what it's so going to be the next few days. I think last time I looked, it was a balmy nine degrees outside. Yes, and I think it's going to get a little colder as the week goes by. But spring is on its way. The days are getting longer. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, winter will be will be over over but soon. Our so along that we've been doing, and this is what we're talking about today, is um, ha finishing our so along, which has been the um, hat hat hooray, which is very appropriate for us because it is a sure. little chilly. Today. Everybody's wearing stocking today, caps, and yes. so we decided several weeks ago to do a so along called Top It Off using the hat hat hooray from terry atkinson atkinson designs so mm -hmm. you can of course find that pattern on our website if you go to henandchickstudio.com slash top it off you'll find the pat link to the pattern mm -hmm. you're going to find the links to the previous three weeks of videos because this is week four so week one we talked about fabric selection week two we talked about cutting week three we talked about piecing mm -hmm. and today week four is all about finishing up your projects. Yes. And, it, and it's so exciting. Now, I have to say, I have not gotten any further on my project since last week, but I have taken, uh, I think, close to 3,000 volleyball or basketball <laughs> photos in the last and you've been week. been editing your photos. And I've been too. editing yeah. photos, trying to get caught up before the next volleyball tournament. So it's not that I haven't been doing something creative, um, but did not get the borders added. So we totally understand if you um, haven't started it, or you've been inspired, or you started and you had to put it aside, it's okay. All the things that it's we've life. talked about, there's life, isn't it? All the things we've talked about are transferable to any project. And that's our whole point, is to help yes. you um, in anything, whether you're doing the so long with us or not on this. Absolutely. Particular. Now, we'd love to see your projects. And, of course, you can always go to our creative community. You do have to answer just a couple quick questions to get in if you're not currently a member. But post what you're doing. We love to see progress and to be oohed and odd. Um, if you are doing the hat, hat hooray and top it off so long and want to be entered in our prize drawing. Oh, I always forget about the prizes. Yes. Oh, there's, I love prizes. I love to give stuff away. Um, that deadline, I looked, it's actually February 9th. Okay. And the link is on the top it off page. Okay. So, and we have had actually some submissions. Oh, we have. Yep. Yep. And I loved it. Molly called this morning and Molly was showing her a uh, Hawkeye um, <laughs> version of Hat Hat Hooray on the creative community this um, today. I think today it was. But she told me that her boys, she obviously has two boys, um, grown men, I believe. I do not yeah. believe they're small children. Um, and they were arguing over who oh, was going to fun. get her hat, hat, hooray yeah. quilt. Well, so now she's already cut out a second oh, one. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, she's oh already on the way of yeah. getting the second one done. So that's exciting. Yeah. Now, you can only enter one into the contest, um, into the drawing, but by all means, if you make your hat, hat, hooray by February 9th, the top has to be done and then uploaded. And pieced together. And pieced together yeah. and then uploaded. And so I've been working on mine, which has cherries, and you can, I think, see that there. Um, yes, oh, absolutely, you can see that. And oh, I see we've got Minnesota and Las Vegas. Woohoo! And oh, and Jan from Nevada. And Jan, we know you have yes. um, your um, your hat, hat, hooray, done. And Karen a Reed is in Florida, where it's I, 69 I only saw today. I that she was down there this morning. Yeah. So I've been working on mine. And if you remember on mine, I used a different. Um, what do I approach? Say? Yeah, a different approach with the background being a batik. Use some cuddle scraps and flannel. So it, it's a little bit different combo of it, but I think it's going to turn out super cute. Oh, it's going to be adorable. Yeah. It is going to be adorable. Yeah. So that's what's really fun is to see all the different combinations that everybody is doing. Okay, so today our topic is finishing, finishing. getting mm -hmm. it done. And we're taking the approach of frequently asked questions because 
we're often asked yes, the same are. questions over and yes. over. So if one person has asked, let alone more than one, we also know that there's a lot of you that have even more um, <laughs> questions about that. Yeah. So we're gonna and we're gonna, um, we're gonna go through these. Yeah. and discuss them a little bit and, and by uh, all means they can d discuss and interact through the comments as well absolutely and if you have more questions about what we're saying again we're always we try hard to follow up in the next you know 24 to 48 hours so don't hesitate yeah. to put that question there and always 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 don't hesitate to call us <laughs> if you have some burning question we would be glad to answer that and so that you can keep working on your project okay, okay. so we're going to start with do you square your entire quilt top when it's done before you quilt it? Okay, and so uh, when we talk about squaring, squaring blocks are different than squaring your entire quilt. So just make sure we're, that you're when you're listening to this, we do think it's important to square your blocks. For instance, let me grab. Yep. So um, usually, especially I'm going to say, let's go with Terry Atkinson's patterns. Yep. She's awesome about saying this unit should measure X, Y, Z. Eight this, and a half by 10 or whatever it is. This unit should measure that critical step in the process of quilt making yep. is that if this block is supposed to measure, I'll say eight, eight and a half by 10 and a half, if whatever, that is, it is, whatever yeah. it is, it's critical that it does measure that, that at that measurement. point. And even so, so that kind of goes back to our piecing videos and some of the things that we've talked about with that. Mm -hmm. But very important. So when you piece your quilt top together, if you've taken the time to make sure your blocks are accurate, and sometimes it's just the slightest little bit that you're right. off, but you've taken that time, then hopefully your, your, your quilt, quilt is, square, is pretty much square. square or whatever size it's so supposed to be. To the, uh, to the question right and if let's just pretend this is my um you know if this is my my quilt right here and it's got notes on it but if if i said oh wait a minute this isn't square and i i'm going to draw a line and i said and i'll be dramatic and i said oh but i need to maybe i can do it on my hand maybe not i need to go like this and create some kind of a crazy angle because it's so not square so it's like not when not i square. measured it maybe one side was 55 and the other side was 45 will right. be extreme right you, if you try to cut it and trim up at that mm -hmm. point, you're going to have a real mess. So no, we do yeah. not recommend trimming. At that point, I'd be working with however I'm going to have it finished. If I'm going to professional long armor, I would be saying, hey, I know this isn't square. Is there anything you can do to help? Maybe maybe it's something that you actually have to take apart and reconstruct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it does go back to the basics. Yep. If you, cut, to the if you cut accurately mm -hmm. and you piece accurately, you trim your blocks accurately, then the finished product is going to go together much faster. Yep. And so and the answer to that from Heidi and I, now everybody has their own opinions and we understand that, but if I have a quilt top, I am not squaring it. No. Um, because also, let's use your little diagram here. Yeah. If yeah. this was a printed... Should, we could get the whiteboard out. We could get the whiteboard out. But that would be that would be too fancy. That would be too fancy. And they like our drawings, I'm pretty oh, sure. I'm sure they do. Okay, you so the, yeah. if this was my border here, and I had a print in it, and I was ending up having to trim part of it off, but then part of it's there to get it square, it's gonna look then weird. it's going to be more, even more obvious. Correct. So that's our simple answer is, is no. no. Okay? Okay. We know not everybody has that, but that's, yes. that's what we say. Yes. And what we say matters. That's, oh, of course, of course, <laughs> okay. of course. All right. We have an opinion about everything. Okay, okay. so next frequently you, asked question. Okay. Do FAQ. You, do you use batting? And if so, what batting do you use? Yes. Well, okay, I do have to digress and just say, because yes, I use batting, and I love Hobbs um, 80-20. That is what we sell here. But have I ever told you about the batting lecture I went to one time? You have I, told I, me. But okay, yeah. so I'll very quickly tell yes. you. It was the year that O.J. Simpson, Simpson was <laughs> chased on the freeway in the white van in a slow motion, Bronco. whatever year yeah. that was. Yeah. I was at a show called yeah. Quilt America. 94, I think it was. Is it 84? 94. It would have been 94, think, probably, yeah. yes. Um, and I was at that quilt show, and... Um, somebody said to me, hey, we're going to Harriet Hargrave's batting lecture at 9 o'clock at night. Do you want to come with? And I'm thinking, what a snoozer, right? Yeah, at 9 o'clock at night. 11 o'clock, I am wide awake, and I am excited about batting. Because <laughs> the batting, I mean, we could talk for hours about the kinds of batting that are available, um, all of that. Uh, we did do a free lecture yeah. with mm -hmm. Hobbs batting that is available on our mm -hmm. website. I'll put the link in later. 
Um, but it is uh, a free class. You can go back and list, list, listen and with Stephanie. And it's fascinating with all the different things it is. she talks about. It is because there is a different end result with different battings and depending on what you want to do. But generally, okay, generally, everything, everything that's quilted in the store mm -hmm. uses Hobbs 8020. We carry it in both 96 inch wide and 120 inch wide. Off the bolt. Off the bolt. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. I, I love that batting. Mm -hmm. I think it quilts well. I think it washes well. Um, I think it has a nice hand to it. Yeah. It's not too stiff. It's not too, not too wimpy. Right. You know, all those kinds of things. If you really wanted a thicker, you could actually do two layers yeah. of it. Then it becomes more personal preference, but yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and um, Again, depending on the size of your project can make a difference. So we know with this, we're talking about quilt. But if you're doing table runners, then there are different battings and different ideas sure. with that. Sure. So again, what you're doing and what you're using it for becomes. But do we use batting? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, the only time we don't use batting, and and I think that this might actually refer to uh, another question. Yeah, um, so. But so there is one time we don't use batting. We'll talk about that in yeah. a second. Yep. So... Uh, Come back yep. to that. Let's okay. come back to that. All right. So if you're using uh, your quilt, do you machine quilt it or how, what do you do for quilting? Do you have to quilt something? Yeah, correct. Okay. So the, I'm going to say the long story short, what is the end use of your quilt and how does that reflect what you're going to, how you're going to quilt it or to, or to get the layers, the top the batting and the backing together. So the purpose of the quilting is to hold those, to layers, hold those together. layers together. Right. Now, if I'm using jean material, so something very heavy, heavy, and I am throwing my jean quilt in the trunk of the car to have uh, when we're tailgating yep. or to, uh, uh, if I were to have a car trouble and needed something or if I'm at a, having a picnic right. or whatever, you know, I might just tie that quilt, mm -hmm. and it might be enough to hold the layers together. So when and you're serve talking about tying, Heidi, because we might have some people that have never heard about tying, yep. the tying process—you're actually literally tying, tying through the layers. So needle Correct. in, up through the bottom, tying the knot. Yep. There's different ways you can do different it. Different knots you yep. can use. You could add a button. Um, you could actually tie from the. You could make the tie end up on the back right. of the yep. quilt. And mm -hmm. so you mean lots of. Fun things you can do with that, different colors, different weights of thread, um, mm -hmm. uh, baby quilts, charity quilts are often. Some people don't like baby quilts with ties because they're concerned the, about what the child, the baby will actually get, yeah. you know, if they Just, were to it's pull a it apart. Personal preference on it. Yes. So that's one way that you would finish a quilt if Correct. you were putting the layers together. Correct. Okay, well, hand quilting. Hand quilting, yes. Okay, there is a lost... Art it's it's becoming harder and harder. If somebody hand quilts their quilts, it's because they love the process. Mm -hmm. They love, just like I love hand embroidery, they love the feel of the needle going mm -hmm. through the fabric, and that is wonderful. The churches and the groups mm -hmm. that are doing it are fewer and fewer. I do have an Amish friend that's currently hand quilting one of my quilts mm -hmm. um, that you can find um, to do. Cost-wise, um, one time I calculated it, and it was very comparable to custom quilting. Mm -hmm. No surprise, right? Because I mean, it's, it's somebody's it, hand yeah. work. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's possible. Some people prefer to hand quilt a smaller project right. than a big project. Yeah. So you know all of that. So, so another way to do it, and then of course we have machine quilting. machine quilting. So that can be domestic or per, or long arm, and it can be you or professional. So mm -hmm. three ways. So domestic. When we refer to your, a domestic sewing machine, we're really talking about the sewing machine you're working on at home, right? That's the, mm -hmm. the term for it is a domestic sewing machine. That's pushing it through the, you know, the small opening kind yeah. of thing. Um, so that's, you can do it and you can do free motion. You can do all the different kinds of things there, or you can go to a long arm. Now we rent out our long arm. Mm -hmm. So this morning we taught yeah, two we ladies yep. um, and that was really fun to see uh, Joyce and Mary uh, have some success. Mm -hmm. uh, getting on the long arm, uh, it, it's expensive to buy a long arm quilting machine <laughs> in the tune of $30,000 if you were to buy this, this what we have here brand new today. Um, so be, by us offering that as a 
rental rental um, really is a cost efficient use as well as it's space I mean right. how many people yeah. have room for a big yeah. machine so you can rent it that's you know we have a we have a website page that's all about long arm um, services mm -hmm. that way and then of course there's professional long arms right and we have a couple that we recommend here there are lots of Absolutely, long armors yeah. um, out there uh, but you are paying them then to to, well, you know, to, to put the layers yeah, together yeah, yeah. And so one thing I would say too is um, you, you can go and learn more about long arm and the advantages to long arm. We won't go into that right now. And Correct. we know that this this is a little bit longer with our tips of and answering questions today. So you know, hang in there with us and we'll keep yep. answering. And um, if you have further questions about the long arm or how tying or any of that does, in yeah. the comments or give us a call. Absolutely. Let's just make sure we're like we're still on air. Oh, yep, we're Are still we? on air. Good, good. good. Okay. They're they're still there. Um, okay. And uh, but. You know, yeah, finishing the quilts that way. And then the other thing would be to do nothing. Um, to, do, to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And there's a few examples where we do not use batting and don't use any quilting. And one of them is when we do the easy striped table runner. Mm -hmm. And that's a pattern that we sell. And then uh, we have several samples in the store with quilts. Love using it with a stripe, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's it's easy stripe table runner because yeah. it's how you use a stripe. <laughs> well, if they're going to be going down the middle of your table, having it as flat as possible. Sometimes you want that. Right. So your mm -hmm. goblet doesn't mm -hmm. tip or your bowl or. Again, end yeah. use of what yeah, you're end use. doing. And they're, they're seasonal quite often. You maybe are only going to use it one or two yeah. times. If the grandkids are going to dump the cranberry sauce at Thanksgiving on it, you know, gonna, yeah. you don't maybe don't want to put right. a ton of investment into it. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do on those is we don't even bind them we literally put right sides together so turn and flip yep. so it shut so no binding no batting no quilting mm -hmm. and you just end up with a very nice simple flat yeah. um, table runner yeah so yeah. in general though on a quilt yes we finish it with some sort of stitch yes because and of course it, we could go we could go so many ways with that yeah we love the idea of having texture Mm -hmm. on the quilt both you know sometimes and sometimes sometimes the quilt like the quilt behind us calls for beautiful design mm -hmm. because the space shows it off mm -hmm. whereas sometimes um you know we just need them the layers hook, put together right. so there's just different right. purposes right okay. okay so now let's talk about what what do you put on the back of your quilt and then we're going to go into binding because yep. i have to know what we're going to put on the back before we can finish it with binding so Backing of your quilt, what would you use? Cotton, flannel, cuddle, and when you talk about um, cotton, and when we have one flannel, talk about then whether it's like regular size bolts, so mm -hmm. we're talking 44, 45 inch bolts, or wide backs that are 108. Mm -hmm. So if you are, um, everybody's very different about this. Yes. Some people like to buy a fabric that matches the collection. Mm -hmm. Um, and you want to get that fabric, so you, you're going to have to piece it because we don't have wide back right. in um, every except, collection. Yeah, like, but we do have 60 inch wide, like in the sunshine and yeah. slate collection. Yeah. It happens to be, although although after today we've had yeah. several people buying that, so yeah. that's um, going out the door. Um, but the you know there's there's that way mm -hmm. to put on the back. Um, there's some people who like me totally different i'm okay like did you see the quilt uh yesterday, yesterday yeah good uh our opposites attract good news quilt is black and white on the and gray on the front and we put a piece of hot magenta on the um, back, on the back yeah. because i'm okay and, yeah. and and let me even as we stand here jamie i'll yeah. just like turn flip that up like look how i have such a colorful back um on this this is all like solids and so, so just being able to put something fun and different on there um, mm -hmm. is is different. Yeah. Now the cuddle yep. offers a whole nother opportunity. And so with the cuddle, and you know we love the cuddle as I'm petting it right now. This happens to be our C3 cuddle. You can use locks, which it comes in 60 wide. This cuddle in the C3. These were all 90 inch wide. And what we did with these are very. This one is very well used. Um, but we brought it here to show you also how cuddle some people haven't seen cuddle and does it quilt nicely mm -hmm. and and we do think that so i brought just i grabbed three and brought them to show you the different ways that you can use and this helps to show 
um, also the quilting. The cuddle shows your quilting a little bit more. Yes. And now uh, I'm going to say warning, red flag. When we're talking about cuddle and all those, if you were to use it on your domestic machine. Oh, true. You got to be layered, pinned, basted. Probably wouldn't recommend it. Wouldn't recommend it. Maybe a really small project. Yes. But the bigger project you get, oh my gosh, the stretch could be absolutely horrible. That's very true. On the long arm, it's a breeze. Yeah. It's a breeze because we know how to handle it. We turn the, the, the salvage to a different direction and it's super easy. So if you are sending your quilts out to a professional, ask them mm-hmm. um, if they're willing to accept cuddle. I think most of them are. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, and it, it works well. We work with. Yep. Uh, but yes, it, it works so well. And, mm-hmm. and things that are good about it is that you see the design, and I think that one shows up really well. Let me just yeah. double check. Um, oh yeah, that shows up so beautifully. And this one we talk a lot about in our long arm certification class that you don't have to have an intricate design. Mm-mm. This one was literally, as you can see, just waves. We tell people that and they can't visualize it necessarily. So this is a good visual. None of them are the same. It's just texture. Correct. But with cuddle, the thread almost like shrinks yeah. in mm-hmm. or what is that? You know, disappears. 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 Kind of. mm-hmm. So you don't, like I'd have to really seek out what color thread was u- yeah. used on this, but instead you see the wave. Yeah. And I like that also mm-hmm. about the cuddle is that it's more about the design than it is yeah. about the color of the thread. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So just to give you some ideas with that and how that works versus um, that one's very custom. These guys here are just very random. And lovable. But have different, the texture to it. And then actually this one has words written on it. So another yeah. thing you can do is yeah. write words in it. Yeah, okay, when you're using the long arm because it's woo-woo-woo. yes, woo-woo. yeah. So, and what's your favorite kind of backing? I mean, like, do you have a favorite? Like, do you always think, oh, like the girls? The girls are starting to like be open to cotton because I'm just like, okay, you know, Enough we don't cuddle. need every quilt yeah. with cuddle on the back, yeah. but uh, we love cuddle. I would say, on the back I mean, of these are three that I just grabbed two off my couch. The third one off my couch, I didn't bring. This is another one I have we to still them. put the binding on. Use them. Love cuddle. Um, also, I would say cuddle can be used in the summer. We've talked about it yes. here. We still use our cuddle in the summer. It's not a hot product. Do we use batting when we use cuddle? Yes. Yes, we do. We do. Yep. Um, if I was to do a bed size quilt, like a king cut, definitely would go with, with your cotton wide back then. Absolutely. As I say, the bigger because it just gets, yeah. it gets, you know, hard. Heavy. And of course, this is only like either 60 or 90 yeah. inches. And you're... Yeah, it does get heavy on um, when you're winding it on the machine, yeah. too. Now, I have to say, I have had a few customers that we've had come in that are doing a bigger quilt yep. and use our, as I look down here, we uh-huh. do have a couple of wide back flannels, mm-hmm. so it's a little flatter mm-hmm. um, than an 80-20, but still has a little bit more body than nothing yeah. at all. Um, so you can uh, certainly could put a flannel in um, in so, a heavier quilt. And so what you're saying with that is you're layering that flannel instead of in, batting. That's correct. Instead, of, yeah, yeah. instead yeah. of batting. Or you could use a flannel back. You could you use can, flannel as backing with well, batting too. Yes. You could, yeah, you could do a yeah. couple different yeah. combinations. Yep. Okay. So I hope that gives you a little bit with, and we have a great selection of wide backs if you haven't been in and as well as our cuddle. Okay. So big controversy. Binding strip. What do you cut it at? I cut mine at two and a half. Yep. And I like two and a quarter. Mm-hmm. It's only a quarter inch difference. Not that big a deal, but I like mine to be a little bit smaller. Yep. And I um, I do like the two and a half inch wide, but I am very careful that I don't cut the batting and backing too short mm-hmm. so that my binding is Has full. Some, yes. It's very full. Because that can happen with... If you use your two and a half, and I think that's probably why I tend to go with the two and a quarter because it's, it's easier for you to control yeah. it so that it's full, and, yeah. and that's and that's a legitimate. Yeah. Now there are some books out there like our three yard quilt, so we talk a lot about the three yard quilts, and one of the reasons that she can get what she does out of a three yard piece of you know three yard mm-hmm. three one yard pieces of fabric is that she uses a much narrower binding strip. So again, we're going to use our piece of paper. You're cutting yours at two and a half. I'm cutting mine at two. This is not that, but Fold we're folding it in, in half. So now I've got my raw edges here. So my raw edges are together. Now, depending if I'm going to machine stitch or hand, hand stitch, stitch the binding down. If I am going to hand stitch the binding down on one side, I'm starting on the front 
of the quilt. Mm -hmm. And I'm putting my raw edges with the raw edges of the quilt tops. Oh, yeah. And you can use that. I think that'll yeah. work. And I'm putting it on the front side. And then I'm literally pulling it over. And then I'm going to hand stitch it on the back. If I am going to machine stitch, I reverse that. Mm -hmm. So I am now aligning all the raw edges on the wrong side of my quilt, stitching it, and then I'm pulling it over. And I believe the key, the whole key to this is using a thread color that is very similar to your fabric. Yep. And then stitching from the front right along the edge. Um, and typically, if you, as they are, are even enough that line of stitching is just on the other side of the binding on the back it doesn't go in the ditch or anything like yeah. that but you you know you and might it takes practice it, it takes does. it takes but, practice but again is, are you using your quilt you right. know is anybody really right. looking at where that stitch on your binding is besides you on that's that correct part of it. and so that's a very very simple way of, of doing and so it. in the three yard quilts what she's doing is yeah. using a smaller like a single layer like a single layer with my yep i'll hold your bar with one of them let me show you the really cute block oh. <laughs> while she's folding so she's folding one side down stitching that that open side yes and then wrapping around the top that's how she cuts it smaller yep. so again it's a personal preference some of you might have a different way yet to do it um some people might wrap around from the back Yep. There's all different ways, but yep. that's how we would recommend. Yep. So we do um, have some people who love the three yard books and the patterns that they're doing, but they always get an extra quarter of a yard of the one they're going to use for binding. Yep. So they've got plenty to do a two and a half, two and a fourth, whatever they prefer mm -hmm. um, kind of strip. Yeah. Um, but have you ever used anything besides fabric for binding? I have not. Well, you know, I have to, I have to tell you that my grandmother loved to do other things. And when I go out and speak to groups, I show yeah. lots of mm -hmm. examples. She loved using prairie points. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And yes. so instead of putting a binding, she'd layer prairie points and then basically stitch across them, fold them over, hand stitch the backing up, and have these prairie points sticking yeah. out. So wonderful. Beautiful. And she did the same thing with Rick Rack one time. Oh, yeah, I think you actually might have showed me that. Yeah, that's yeah. the hexagon mm -hmm. quilt. Yeah. And, you know... There are no rules. Yeah. Break the rules. Be creative. If mm -hmm. you've got some other idea of how you want to finish an edge on a quilt, go for it. Right. It doesn't have to be a bind. Like we're showing That's as right. a binding that way. That's right. Yeah. And so Heidi, I'm trying to think. I think we um those are pretty Yeah, let much me see if anybody else has any other have. questions that they want to ask. If yeah. I see any um questions in there. And so yep. I think the biggest thing again. If we can go back to the very basics at the very beginning. I have to tell you who's watching. Charisma Horton. Oh, and Charisma, Charisma, don't you love, she <laughs> loves the quilt behind I us. And that does. is Charisma's pattern called Carousel. So hello, Charisma. Nice to have you watching with us. Yeah, that's and awesome. Goldie and Virginia made that quilt and they loved the pattern. So, so nice to have you watching with us this afternoon. Yeah, so all of our friends that are watching, check yep. out her. And we sell the stuff. pattern. Yeah. Yep, yeah. we sell several of her patterns because she's got great graphic patterns. So, yes. um, so, so I had to digress there for a oh. second. Okay. I would say, if anything, we're always going to go back to the basics. So we're going to refer you back to at the very beginning, starting from the very beginning, step one of cutting accurately. Everything leads up to finishing your quilt nicely is starting at the very beginning. But at the same time, don't let it stop you from jumping in and trying something um, and, and oh, yeah. doing different techniques and learning different or trying to do if you haven't used a cuddle before, use a cuddle back. Don't, don't be afraid of that. That's either. right. That's right. You, you know, and, and we had this discussion this morning, actually, in class. You know, every once in a while, we have that quilt that we're like, mm, that might not have been my best quilt or my best effort or my favorite uh, result. Uh, yeah. You know what? Move on. Make another quilt. Yeah. You know, because don't need it. Get rid of it. I, Somebody will still love it. I heard a quote uh, or saw a quote today because, you know, I love quotes. It says, don't let a bad day become a bad life. Yeah. Well, the oh, same boy, thing, yeah. the same yeah. thing could be said about a quilt. Don't let one bad quilt make it all of them bad. No, because yeah. that's so or not the case. Because we all have, we all have a bad day. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Bad hair day, bad, whatever. Yes. You know, so anyway, so that's certainly something that, again, if you tried something and you didn't like it, yeah, you learn yeah. something and move on yeah. and make the next quilt. Yes, absolutely. So. so 
I think, so this is going to wrap up our fourth week of our Top It Off um, uh, so, long. so Along. Thank you. And again, <laughs> February 9th is going to be the uploading date for getting your Hat Hat Hooray pattern tops, your quilt tops um, uploaded. February 14th is when we're going to have a little award ceremony. Which is also Valentine's Day. Which is also, yes, also Valentine's Day. And we have some ideas of what we're going to do next for kind of a series like this, but we're not quite ready um, to... No. Uh, to divulge all of that, but you know us, we are always scheming mm -hmm. and we have a plan. Just again, not re quite ready to um, yep. tell you about that. So we will we will um, tease you a little bit and say, um, you know, stay keep, tuned, stay tuned, and keep coming back. Yep. Um, and so I guess that is all for us today to top it off. Top it off, absolutely. Yep. And we hope that until the next time we see you, be creative.